Hello everybody, welcome back to another new video, and in today's video I'll be diving into another iceberg with some creepy ads and PSAs with the creepy ads iceberg. How fitting that during the Christmas season I'm talking about disturbing ads. Also, if you already don't know, I have a merch store at zakar.store. I have things like stickers, shirts, sweatshirts, and even hoodies. There is a shop section on my YouTube channel as well that shows off all my products that I have on my website, but uh, if you want to check out the website, zakar.store, links in the description, and it's on screen. Also, for the rest of the year, you can get 10% off your order with the code HOLIDAY10. Anyways, let's just get straight into the iceberg. Tier 1 WSIB Top Chef A 2007 PSA from the Canadian company WSIB follows a sous chef as she's talking to the viewer about her life. She mentions that she's going to be head chef by next year, and that she's getting married to her fiancé, but she won't be marrying him this weekend. Why is that? Well, she tells us after that she's getting into an accident and points out how the grease on the floor should have been cleaned up and the fry pan shouldn't have been left out so close to the walkway. As she's talking, she slips and hits the pan so oil goes all over her face and the text there are no accidents comes up. PlayStation. Baby. Baby is one added in a series of advertisements for the PS3 where they would have a few different random scenarios in a white room with the console itself. In this ad in particular, there's a toy baby looking at a PlayStation 3 as the toy baby stares at it and laughs, cries all over the console with tears coming out and going back in the toy baby's eye sockets. I think everyone knows how weird these ads are, and god, watching this again, yeah, it is really weird. Adult Swim. The Dawn is Your Enemy. The Dawn is Your Enemy is an Adult Swim bumper that aired between 2005 and 2010, and the bumper was basically telling the viewer that the Dawn's your enemy. They do this with a drawing of hills with flowers as the sun's rising with a face on it as well as a pair of eyes with eyebrows in the sky. The point of the bumper was saying that Dawn is your enemy because you've stayed up all night watching Adult Swim and it was meant to scare children away from watching Adult Swim. Dumb Ways to Die This is a PSA release in 2012 from the Australian company Metro Trains and this PSA absolutely blew up when it came out which spawned two different phone games. The PSA sings a song about Dumb Ways to Die while showing Dumb Ways to Die in a cartoony way. The message gets delivered when the dumb ways to die are things to do with trains, and finally at the end of the PSA, the message be safe around trains, a message from Metro comes up. As I mentioned just before, the PSA absolutely blew up everywhere. Not just in the state of Victoria and Australia, but it went nuts worldwide. And I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but I think it is the most viewed PSA on YouTube of all time. It's kind of funny because I still see these print ads around train stations in Victoria, because I live in the state that this PSA was for. I still see those ad campaigns, the whole PSA campaign, in train stations. And also, the campaign was that successful that RTD in Denver wanted the campaign for themselves, and they actually got it for the state of Denver. Anti-smoking PSAs So this entry is just talking about various anti-smoking PSAs that would air on random television stations. The funny part about these is they would usually air anytime during the day, the more disturbing ones would only air after about 9pm, but a lot of kids would still see a lot of these during the day and get scared by them. Each country does have their own fair share of anti-smoking PSAs, but with America, it's mainly the real cost and truth PSAs. Kaffee Coffee This is a series of advertisements for a German coffee drink called Kaffee, and I'm pretty sure you know what this is all about. Basically, that would be a normal video, something casuals playing until like a ghoul or a zombie or something like that jump scares you at the end of the ad. There are a few that are fake outs, but the whole point of this campaign is to say that their coffee gives you energy. Basically, because it's scaring you, gives you like a jolt of energy. It's like, oh, this drink will give you energy. These ads are just annoying, and honestly, I'm still traumatized from the car ad one, thanks to childhood trauma being shown the ad when I was really young. Domino's Pizza. Avoid the Noid. These advertisements for Domino's Pizza would feature a character called the Noid, and this ad campaign started in 1986. The character is meant to represent what a bad pizza is like, such as the pizza being squashed and whatnot. And in these ads, the character tries to ruin Domino's pizza, but fails in the ads. The ad campaign ran from 1986 to 1995 when they decided to end the campaign. And believe it or not, they did make a game for the NES called Yo Noi that released in 1990. Apparently, the reason Domino's ended the Noi campaign was because a man named Kenneth Lamar Noid believed that the campaign was directed towards him and decided to enter a Domino's restaurant in Georgia with a 357 Magnum and held two employees hostage over five hours. If that's the reason Domino's ended the campaign, then honestly, I don't blame them. That's fair enough. But surprisingly, the Noid came back in 2021 for a few ads on social media sites. 
trolley gummy worms, stop motion ads. The trolley stop motion ads mainly run from 2019 and 2020, where a character or a few characters are set in a horror setting. In a few, a character would be hiding from a monster and then the trolley gummy worms would sing and reveal where the person is to the monster. There are a few that are more lighthearted, such as this one with the troll where he turns into a friendly troll after seeing the trolley gummy worms. I don't know, these ads are pretty simple and basic in my opinion. Little Baby's Ice Cream Little Baby's Ice Cream is an ice cream company that's based in Philadelphia that closed in 2019. The company has a few disturbing ads, with most of them being in 2012. The one the company is known for the most is the ad called This Is A Special Time. In the ad, a man covered in ice cream is eating ice cream on top of his head. There's a narrator talks about Little Baby's Ice Cream and that the ice cream is a special time and that it's a feeling. The first ad absolutely blew up and from there the company made a few other ads that gained attention but not as much as this one did as I mentioned before, the company did unfortunately close in 2019. Kinder Eggs, Humpty Dumpty An 80s advertisement for the kids chocolate company called Kinder Eggs decided to advertise their chocolates by using the kids character Humpty Dumpty, but he looks more human. So the character himself is still shaped like an egg but has more human features and human skin and stuff. And all I can say is, who thought this was a good idea? But in the ad, Humpty Dumpty's sitting on a ledge, and he's kind of talking about the Kinder Eggs in some other language I've heard, apparently. It's meant to be a different language, but all I heard was just random noises. Either way, he's on the bench saying stuff, and then at the end of the ad, he falls off the wall. Pee Wee Herman PSA So the infamous PSA that features Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens. Honestly, the backstory to this PSA is more interesting than the PSA itself. Which is kind of funny because Paul Rubens decided to get arrested because he did some very suspicious things in adult theatre. And because he got arrested, he had to do 75 hours of community service. With the 75 hours he was given, he decided to make this PSA as well as another PSA featuring one of his characters from Pee Wee's Playhouse called Penny. There are a few other of these PSAs that feature other celebrities like Clint Eastwood and Nelly Sheedy and stuff like that. But this one's just strange. Grubhub Cinematic Universe the only thing I could find is this original Grubhub ad, so I don't know what the Grubhub Cinematic Universe means. So basically the 2020 Grubhub ad is a commercial where a father's ordering food through the Grubhub app, and after doing so, he as well as a few other people dance for the rest of the advertisement. The ad itself is meant to say that the perks you get from Grubhub will make you want to dance because they're that good. And the ad became a massive meme in 2020 because of how terribly cringe this ad is. Like, it's a mixture of the dancing and the music that just really does not look good and it looks really out of touch. Quiznos, Sponge Monkeys. This ad for Quiznos subs in the US has two sponge monkeys. Both of the characters are singing a song about how they love the subs at Quiznos and a narrator comes in to say a few of their different subs. There's not really much to this ad, but apparently a lot of people really like this ad, even though I think it's really strange and I do not know what they were smoking to make this. Burger King. Pokeball Recall PSA So this is a PSA from Burger King and the Consumer Product Safety Commission where they warn kids about the Pokeball toys that was determined as a choking hazard that came from Burger King. This happened after a 13 month old girl suffocated on one of them as she had half of the ball covering her nose and mouth and the parents took Burger King to court and won. Apparently how this happened is because the actual Pokeball itself was creating like a vacuum effect where the ball would suction at the person's face. But in the PSA we basically see a photo of the Pokeball as the narrator is telling people to throw them out or return them to Burger King because of this issue. Nintendo Restaurant A 1995 advertisement for the Nintendo game Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the SNES. This is a really strange advertisement where a man's at a restaurant and he keeps eating more and more food as the narrator is talking about how they cram so much in their game. The man constantly keeps eating more and more and absolutely inflates like a balloon and he keeps talking about more features in the game and all this stuff while the man's eating. And then the narrator mentions a bonus level whilst the man eats a little bit more food and then he ends up blowing up everywhere. Who thought this was a good idea for a game advertisement? Like, what does this have to do with the game itself besides from having a lot of content? And what a weird way to show that. Airheads ads. These Airheads commercials were aired sometime in the late 2010s where people would eat the Airheads candy and their heads would blow up like a balloon. These ads are just really cursed because who wants to see a person with a giant head and a small body like this? It's just strange. Tier 2 Nintendo, you cannot beat us. Oh, this infamous ad I talked about in my last Iceberg video. This ad was released in 1985 in Australia of all places 
and we have this weird human CGI person trying to challenge all players on the NES. And after that, we see a few different characters from Super Mario Bros, Duck Hunt, and even a smink from Gyromite say, you cannot beat us. Who the fuck plays Gyromite? It's really dated CGI with all the Nintendo characters, and the synthesized voices really don't help in this scenario, they just make it even more disturbing. And throughout the whole we get to hear the Super Mario Bros castle music throughout it, so it makes the ad seem more stressful and seem more like a threat. Like the way they're saying, you cannot beat us, it just sounds like a threat to the viewer. Smokey Bear, If You Knew It Was Me This 1973 PSA from Ad Cancel called If You Knew It Was Me follows the actress Joanna Cassidy talking to the viewer about the forest. She goes on to talk about the forest and how forest fires easily happen and that they can happen often and tells the viewer to be extra careful when you're in the forest next. After that, she pulls her hair over and her head then rips off her face to reveal that it was Smokey Bear behind it all, as he says, if you knew it was me, would you have listened? I'm going to give you some good advice for this PSA. Do not pause whilst the mask has been taken off. Like, that's nightmare fuel. Autoway Tire Ghost Tire Ghost is a 2013 advertisement for the Japanese company Autoway, and in this ad, a person's driving down a dark snowy road. The two people in the car spot a ghost woman in the distance who then jumps right in front of the screen. The people in the car obviously panic and they reverse out of there. Text comes up saying snowy roads are scary and after that we see the ghost woman holding up a laptop that says have you ever put snow tires in your car. Then the company's logo comes up. Yeah, I can see why this scared people. Milton Bradley, Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket's a kid's game where you have to use a scoop to scoop up colored balls and put them in Mr. Bucket as he spits them back out. In my opinion, Mr. Bucket isn't scary at all, but watch lots of people make sex jokes about Mr. Bucket with the whole bowls thing going on. I also think a lot more people nowadays know about this because of the Board James episode where they talked about the game Mr. Bucket. Scotland Against Drugs Photograph This is a Scottish PSA from the company Scotland Against Drugs that was released in 1996, showing a teenager in a photograph slowly deteriorating over time. First off, some spots appear on the face, as well as teeth rotting to make him look worse. The picture then changes to a video of a raver looking stressed before it changes back to an image of the teen. More video shows the teen stressing out and nearly having an anxiety attack until the photo completely like distorts and like warps his face. The photo then slowly fades to black. This PSA just doesn't scare me. When the face is being warped where it looks ridiculous, that's where it loses me. It's disturbing before then. It's actually pretty effective. It's just the ending does not land for me. Snickers grocery store lady. A 2010 commercial from the chocolate brand Snickers decided to advertise their chocolates by having two kids dress up as a lady and telling people to stock up on Snickers. The creepy part about this ad is the mask that the kids are wearing to disguise themselves. It's just really uncanny and it scares a lot of kids. As the actual ad goes, I honestly think it's pretty funny, but as I mentioned before, the scary factor of the mask really overshadows this ad. WSIB Construction Construction is a 2007 PSA from WSIB, the same company that made the Top Chef PSA that I mentioned earlier, and this one obviously focuses around a work site. But in this ad we follow a worker as he's talking about how he's working overtime for his family so they can go on a holiday. But then he mentions that he can't do that because his family gets told that he was in an accident. So yeah, this PSA is the same as the Top Chef PSA, but instead of being in a kitchen, it takes place in a construction site. But then he talks about how he's in a harness and that the company should have checked the tanks and as he says that the tanks blows up as he ragdolls off the side of the building and hits a truck on the way down. All I will say is that the accident was preventable if he just turned his blowtorch off whilst talking to the viewer. This wouldn't have happened if his blowtorch was off. Japanese McDonald's ads. I originally wasn't even going to talk about these in the video, but I do want to talk about them as they are quite interesting and some people believe that they're actually real when they're not. This is a series of four fake McDonald's Japan ads where Ronald is doing creepy things to someone. Such as trying to get into someone's room, ringing someone whilst they're outside their window, hiding underneath someone's bed without being noticed, and lastly Ronald running away from someone. All the fake ads ends with a distorted narrator voice saying, always there, McDonald's in Japanese. Apparently it's please don't sue us for our commercials, but that doesn't sound right for how short the sentence is in Japanese. I know a little bit of Japanese, but it just doesn't sound right. Also, all of the ads are meant to pay homage to different horror movies, such as the first one's meant to be for The Shining, the second one is for Scream, the third one's for The Exorcist, and the last one's for Halloween. While watching these fake ads again, I can definitely see the inspiration. 
Burger King, eat like snake. A 2006 advertisement for Burger King is meant to promote the new Triple Whopper Burger at Burger King. In the ad, a man's unwrapping a new Triple Whopper Burger and says, mmm, meat in his head. And whilst doing so, then goes to get a drink because he forgot to get his drink, I guess. As he does that, a man behind him is staring at the burger and then falls to the ground and slithers on the ground like a snake to the burger, as we hear a song singing Eat Like Snake in the background. He eventually gets to the burger where he opens his mouth wide and swallows the burger whole and holy shit, this is unsettling. Audi. Doa Huawa. This Audi ad aired during the 2014 Super Bowl and it follows a couple as they're going to get a new dog. The couple are deciding between two dogs as an employee comes out to say you can always breed them both to get what's called a Doba Huawa. Right after that, a dream sequence happens where a Chihuahua has a Doberman's head and in the ad, the dogs were causing chaos all across the city. That's until a title card comes up to say compromises scare us too and then Audi shows off their new Audi A3 car which the ad itself had absolutely nothing to do with Audi until then, but all right. I guess the dogs can be seen as a bit disturbing. Big Bill Hell's Cars. Big Bill Hell's Cars is a vulgar parody of those typical commercials for local car dealership ads and came out in 1990 where the narrator in the ad basically makes fun of the viewer and swears quite a lot. I don't understand how this is scary. It's honestly just kind of funny, but I've seen this ad plenty of times where I don't really find it that funny anymore. I feel like after you see it once or twice, it's kind of worn its effect off. Nintendo, Super Mario Land 2 ad. This 1992 ad for the Game Boy game Super Mario Land 2 has Wario's head talking to the viewer about how Mario is the enemy, and he talks about his plan to get rid of Mario. The narrator then comes in to talk about the game as we see little bits of footage of the game. I guess people were scared of the floating Wario head talking to them? AIDS Candy. AIDS Candy is a candy brand with an extremely unfortunate name, and in this ad in particular, we see the company was advertising their diet AIDS candy in 1989. The ad itself just talks about the candy and how the woman's losing weight by eating it. This ad's just cursed because I don't know how the company didn't decide to change their name with the whole obvious epidemic that was going on around at this time. Panda Cheese. Never say no to Panda. A 2010 advertising campaign for the Egyptian cheese company Panda Cheese has a person in a panda suit terrorizing people as they say no to Panda Cheese. The most well-known one has to be the one that takes place in an office where a man offers a co-worker the cheese and he says no. So the panda then comes up and throws everything off his desk and smashes his keyboard. There are five of these ads from 2010 as the others take place in a hospital, a kitchen and the last two in a grocery shop. Funny about the grocery shop ones is that in the first one, the panda makes a mess of all their groceries, and in the follow up one, it's the same people as they just give in and grab a few of the panda cheese products. In all the ads, the song True Love Ways by Buddy Holy plays. Sandy Hook Promise Back to School Essentials. A Sandy Hook Promise PSA that was released in 2019, and it even won Best Advertisement for the Year, which no other PSA has done that. But in Back to School Essentials, kids talk to the camera about essential items for school until we hear a in the school grounds, as normal school items are used to help the students escape or to defend themselves. The PSA ends with a girl in a bathroom stall as the is walking to their stall. I personally do think that the point of view PSA they made the year before is a better PSA because it kind of shows how these things really happen. And also the fact that I think it's more effective than this PSA. Also, how is this only on tier 2? Fruit Heads. Fruit Gushes. An advertisement released in 1995 from the company Fruit Gushes is an ad showing off their product by having kids eat lollies, and as they do so, the heads turn into different fruits. The cringe part about this ad is how disturbing the kids look, and obviously, just seeing them all together is kind of horrifying. Like, it's so strange to have human features on real fruits. Like, who thought it was a good idea? Annoying, <coughs> orange, sorry. Capri Sun, respect the pouch. Respect the Pouch is a 2000s and early 2010s ad campaign where the kids would drink a Capri Sun and after squishing the pouch they will turn into some weird creature. People turn into random things like an accordion, a turtle, and even a pogo stick? What the hell was Capri Sun smoking? Like for real, these ads are so cursed, who thought that making these ads about Capri Sun was a good idea? Baby Bottle Pops, Giant Baby. This is a very strange advertisement for the Baby Bottle Pops candy, and it has two giant babies sitting on a couch, as two kids come into the room and see them with their Baby Bottle Pops. The babies are rapping about the candy, and this is only a short 15 second ad, but god, those big giant babies are cursed. Who thought that two giant rapping babies was a good idea for this? I'm a Styrofoam Cup. 
This weird PSA from 2007? I'm actually not sure when this came out, but it has a can and a styrofoam cup talking to each other about how the styrofoam cup needs to go in the recycling bin. This whole PSA, well, if it is one, is out there to tell people to recycle it, and I just don't know what to say about this one. It's just really strange. Bam, yo, I'm a styrofoam cup, yo! Wilkins Coffee. Wilkins Coffee is a company that made a bunch of short advertisements created from 1957 to 1961, made by Jim Henson himself. If you don't know who Jim Henson is, he's responsible for doing puppet work for like Sesame Street and even the Muppets. The ad follows two different puppets as one of them resembles Kermit the Frog and even has a similar voice called Wilkins says that people should drink Wilkins coffee. The other puppet is called Wonkins because he won't drink Wilkins. Ah, uh, get it? But he usually interrupts that by saying he doesn't want any or he doesn't like it and as he does that something bad happens to him. Honestly, the funniest ads out there are just the absolutely insane ones where Wonkins gets shot either by Wilkins or by someone else. These ads are absolutely wild, but they have so much charm to them. NRJ Mobile. What? This is a French advertisement for a mobile service where a girl's staring at her phone in a school hallway. And literally the song of shooting stars is playing in the background. Why? There's some numbers going up and as she sees that, she starts to laugh. As she's laughing, her mouth gets wider and wider until the point where her jaw completely unhinges and it goes super wide and her head goes back. And then someone else in the hallway comes up and sees what's going on and does the exact same thing. All I'm wondering is who thought this was a good idea? Like, what? What does this convey? You're going to unhinge your jaw because NRJ Mobile has good phone deals? DOE. Shame on you. A very well-known Irish PSA released in 2014 follows a classroom as they're going on an excursion to some forest. The kids are playing around and having fun, then we see a man had a few drinks and is going to drive home. But the man loses control of his car and then flips the car and squashes a whole classroom of kids. The text shame on you comes up at the end. They really try so hard to get a reaction out of you when the car ends up squishing the whole classroom of kids whilst the teachers just stare at the kids getting squashed and do nothing. This PSA looks so fake that it's actually hilarious. And even the classroom of kids magically disappears. The car's getting flipped. They literally just turn into jackets. I can't even believe people are scared of this PSA. It's literally one of the worst of all time in my opinion. Tier 3. Nickelodeon Egg and Spoon. Nickelodeon Egg and Spoon is a short 15 second bumper on the Nickelodeon channel. In the bumper we see an egg as a spoon hits the egg on top of the egg. And after that, the egg turns into a weird looking monster that makes a groan sound as the spoon turns into a chicken and runs away. The monster egg then turns to the viewer as we go into its mouth to see the Nickelodeon logo. Just a random bumper that people would probably forget about, but apparently it scared a lot of kids. KFC, Kentucky Fried Lie Detector. This is a 1967 advertisement for the well-known fast food chain KFC. And in this ad, people are using a lie detector on Colonel Sanders. They're doing this because they want to find out the seven secret herbs and spices, and he says six, and on the last one, he lies by saying four ounces of your grandfather's overcoat. After that, narrator comes in to say give up on finding out about the secret herbs and spices that made KFC so finger-licking good, as it's the Colonel's secret forever. The narrator and the Colonel laugh at the end of the ad, and honestly, I can see why people are disturbed by this. The whole ad's just shot in a dark room with women interrogating the Colonel, and it does look a bit off-putting, it's a bit strange. Fragile Childhood. Monsters. A well-known 2012 PSA from the company Fragile Childhood in Finland tackles how children see their parents while intoxicated. The PSA follows a few different scenarios where children are with their parents and their children see them as something else and always something disturbing. The children see them as things like a giant ugly rabbit, a grim reaper, a zombie, and even a clown. The PSA ends with one of the kids seeing their father as a robber as they're putting their seatbelt on them. Then at the end of the PSA, the text comes in saying how do our children see us when we've been drinking. A lot of people do say that this is the scariest PSA of all time, and I definitely disagree with that. Like, it's a bit disturbing the first time you see it, but I feel like after that, the shock factor's kind of gone away. And even then, there's many, many, many more PSAs that are a lot more disturbing and harder hitting than this. This just feels like it'd be the scariest PSA to someone that's not really into PSAs. Spirit of Dark and Lonely Water this is a public information film released in 1973 where a hooded figure meant to be the Grim Reaper follows a few kids playing near water as some of them actually fall in and die. This keeps happening until about near the end of the piff where one of the kids falls in and gets saved by a group of kids nearby and the message trying to be pushed to children is to be careful around water. 
By the way, if you don't know, the narrator's voice is Donald Pleasance, and he's known for playing Dr. Loomis in the Halloween series of films. Original Ronald McDonald ad. The original Ronald McDonald ad aired in 1963 and featured a version of Ronald McDonald played by the well-known American weathercaster Willard Scott. In the ad, it starts with shots of the restaurant as the narrator is introducing Ronald McDonald. We finally see Ronald as he has a tray on his head and a cup on his nose, but Ronald's talking to the viewer about McDonald's food and that you'll really enjoy the food. After that, we see Ronald dancing outside the restaurant whilst we hear a jingle singing about Ronald McDonald. It's very interesting that this is the original design of Ronald McDonald, and then through time, he's became what he is now. Charlie says, This is a series of stop-motion paper animated public information films released from CLY in 1973. The PSA plays out a few different scenarios with Charlie the Cat and the Boy. I've talked about these PSAs quite a lot, but there's a drowning PSA where Charlie the Cat nearly drowns in a lake until the boy's father fishes Charlie out of the lake. Then there's another PSA where Charlie watches sausages cook on a stove and then a little bit of oil splashes onto Charlie and they basically get the message across to be careful around like hot pots and pans. And then there's another one as well that takes place in the playground. And the last one's about not following strangers and not going where they want you to. And to basically go to your parents if someone's doing this to you. So yeah, these public information films are pretty straightforward and simple. But they just deliver simple messages to the viewer and they do it well. RSPCA, My Little Puppy. A PSA from RSPCA in the UK released in 2001 shows a little puppy as the family are happy to get a new dog. As the events of the PSA unfold, the family say they get sick of having a dog because it needs to be fed often and even ends up accidentally peeing everywhere. So at the end of the PSA, the family end up locking the dog in an area by itself, and then a man puts the dog in a bag and throws it into a river. Just a twist PSA for the sake of being a twist without having really any substance behind it. Burger King, Scary Clown Night. This is an advertising campaign run by Burger King during the Halloween season of 2017. With the release of the new adaptation of Stephen King's It, Burger King thought it would be a good idea to give the first 500 guests they go to a certain Burger King restaurants a free Whopper if they dressed up as a clown. Apparently Robert De Niro directed this ad, which is really strange. But in this ad we see a kid go out at night as he steps on a clown horn. The kid keeps going on as he gets on his bike to ride down the road when he sees a clown behind him. The kid obviously panics about that, so he pedals more. And as he does so, he sees more and more clowns pop up near him. It gets to the point where there's so many clowns chasing after the kid that the kid gets to a Burger King restaurant and shuts the doors behind him. But when he shuts the doors behind him, there's more clowns behind him as one of them says, I want a Whopper. After the clown says that, the text, come as a clown, eat like a king comes up. Yeah, some people just get scared of clowns and I understand it because people were scared of it. So in theory, this ad would scare them too. Doesn't really help that this ad shot like a horror film as well. So yeah, I understand it. Montana Meth Project. Montana Meth Project is a well-known anti-meth organization started in 1999. The company released a lot of anti-meth PSAs to the 2000s and overall made a lot of PSAs. Montana Meth Project's PSAs were shown to be quite effective when they started showing more the disgusting things that meth does to you instead of trying to completely scare kids. The company does have some great PSAs such as Ben, Deep End and Jessica, but they have some very strange PSAs like everything else which is the only PSA I can ever think of that has a corn song on it. I have a full video where I talk about Montana Meth Project and them in detail, their history and their campaigns and stuff, so card should be up on screen if you want to go check that out. NSPCC, Ventriloquist. This is an NSPCC PSA released in 2004 where a puppet girl is in a classroom with other kids. The teacher is asking a question to the kids but then asks Sally the question, who is the puppet girl in this PSA? And she obviously wants her to answer but Sally doesn't know the answer. And we see the ventriloquist hold the puppet as the man's probably meant to be the father. Then we see Sally out at the playground as another girl asks if she wants to go play it over at her house, but the ventriloquist says no. People are laughing at her on the bus on the way home, and then when she's home, we see that Sally isn't eating at the dinner table as the ventriloquist says that she's fine and that she isn't hungry. The text, children can't speak up, comes up on screen. Yes, the puppet is disturbing, but the whole PSA in general and the subject matter is disturbing as well. This could definitely be in a higher tier than where it is. Duck and Cover Duck and Cover is a 1951 PSA trying to tell people to duck and cover when an atom bomb hits. Keep in mind that this was made about 6 years after World War II ended, so it does make sense why this was made. But the PSA does this by using a cartoon turtle called Bert the Turtle where he covers himself with his shell as ladies are singing the line Duck and Cover. We then get a narrator coming in to tell us to duck and cover when an atom bomb hits as we see footage of actors ducking and covering themselves. The PSA shows a few different scenarios where people duck and cover, such as having a picnic, at a school, and even at home. 
The little jingle comes back at the end of the PSA. There's a full 9 minute version of this public information film as well, but it's basically just the same thing, but just a lot longer. And then this version is a shortened 1 minute version of that. Jack in the Box, Clown Explodes. This is a 1980s commercial for the fast food chain Jack in the Box, where an old woman in the car is asking a group of men what they're doing with Jack in the Box. The men are strapping dynamite to Jack in the Box as one of the men tell her that he's going to go bye bye. The grandpa says that Jack is cute, and one of the men says Jack being cute is in the past, as the men talk about the new burger for the restaurant. The grandma then eats the burger they're talking about, says that the food is better, and says that the food is better at the box, and tells the men to blow up Jack as Jack gets blown to smithereens. Truth, unsweetened. A great PSA from a controversial American company, Truth, in 2011, follows a few hospital patients suffering the effects of smoking on a parade float. They're singing a song about how cigarette companies make tobacco taste sweet by listing all the flavors that they make until they ask why they make tobacco taste sweet. Text then shows up talking about how tobacco companies aren't allowed to make candy flavored cigarettes anymore, but they still sell candy flavored tobacco products in over 45 flavors. This PSA was made before Truth was absolute dog shit, and hey, I've even talked about this company in detail as well, so cards should be on screen at the moment. And to be completely honest though, nearly the past 10 years they've made shit PSAs. Tarako. Tarako is a Japanese commercial from the 2000s where an army of Cupid dolls dressed in Tarako, which is meant to be a Japanese seafood ingredient. They're all chanting Tarako like tarako, tarako. as they're marching and then we see the kid looking at them in shock, which hey who blames her? I think everyone was shocked seeing this for the first time. But after that we see a fork go into the spaghetti as the product comes up on screen and a narrative speaking in Japanese. The thing about ads like this in Japan is that they probably don't think it's weird, they probably think it's a normal Japanese ad. But because it's not our culture, we think these ads are weird. Halifax, Howard in the class. Halifax made this advertisement sometime in the 2000s, I believe it was from 2002, where a horrible looking CGI man's talking to the viewer about loan rates and saying that some people spend up to 15% on them. The weird animated abomination then tells the viewer with Halifax you can get rates of 9.9% on your loans with them, and they also talk about how the big four banks charge anywhere between from 11 to 15%. The man then sings a cover of Who Let The Dogs Out by saying Who Pays You Extra and the kids in the class chant Who to the song. Like Who Pays You Extra? Who? 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 What the fuck? Denny's. Nanapus. This is a 2009 Super Bowl commercial for Denny's where they have a banana peel with googly eyes and a mustache sitting on top of a stack of pancakes, as people call the thing Nanapus. Then someone's pulling strings to make the banana peel move, and a voice meant to be Nanapus sings a song saying you can call him Nanapus as one of his eyes falls off. A lot of attention to detail in this ad, isn't there? But then a deal for Denny's comes up on screen where you can get a free Grand Slam at Denny's every Tuesday from 6am till 2pm. Mr. Potato Head. Giant Head. Giant Head is an advertisement for the kids toy Mr. Potato Head, and in this 1970s advert, a person has a giant potato head on that barely even resembles the toy. But the man's walking down the stairs as he sees kids walk up to him and he gives two kids brand new Mr. Potato Head toys as the kids seem happy and excited about the toys. Kids play with the toys as they're showing off the different types of Mr. Potato Head such as the Donald Duck version and a clown. The ad ends with the man with the potato head saying Mr. Potato Head toys from Hasbro. I'm really seeing a pattern where all of these like old ads, people get scared of them just because they're like old and vintage. But that's the thing though with these ads, just because they're old doesn't mean they're scary. Yummy Buffet Yummy Buffet is an ad for a local restaurant in Chicago that uses text-to-speech voice where the voice talks about the restaurant. The ad has shots of the restaurant and the voice is talking about where the store is located and talking about how it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. To be fair though, the food looks alright, but it's just weird to have text-to-speech in the ad in general. The company is still around, which is a good thing, and if they're still around then it seems like they're doing well, which is good. Support local business, kids. PlayStation, Chris Cunningham this is an advertisement for the PlayStation 2 where a woman with eyes so far apart sits down to talk about the human endeavors. She has a thick Scottish accent and is talking about the man landing on the moon as well as a few other things people have accomplished. She then talks about how you can experience a lot in your mind and it's called the mental wealth, which honestly this ad makes no sense. Like what does this have to do with the PlayStation 2? What's PlayStation Europe smoking man? Give me, give me some. Kleenex, Ogre Baby. Ooh, a supposed cursed commercial. Like it actually curses the viewer, not that it's just a weird ad. 
But in this Kleenex ad released in 1986 from Japan, we hear a song called It's a Fine Day from the artist Jane playing in the background as a mother's with her ogre baby. The mother goes to grab a Kleenex tissue and then we see the mother giving the baby attention. After that, the mother lets go of the tissue as it blows away and we get a closer shot of the tissue flying away. And then the company's logo comes up as the narrator says the company's name. Why was this ad cursed? Well, because apparently the line, it's a fine day, is a German curse, even though the actual song that's being sung isn't being sung in German, it's being sung in English. Apparently Kleenex even pulled the ad after a short amount of time of it airing on TV. Say no to crack, say yes to roller skating. A 2012 advertisement from Roller Kingdom follows kids as the first kid has an old drug dealer offer the kid some drugs. Which local drug dealer like this is above the age of 30? Then we see a second kid as a kidnapper in a van is trying to lure them in with candy, and the last kid has a gang leader asking if they want to go join their gang and vandalize some walls. All the kids say no is they're going to go roller skating. All the kids meet at Roller Kingdom where one kid says he wants to be addicted to roller skating, not crack. A bunch of kids just talk about how they want to rollerblade instead of do drugs because they don't want to go to prison. The owner of the company even comes on screen to talk about their business and how they've been trying to keep kids off the streets since 1999. More people come up and say that they don't want to do bad things. Is this an Adult Swim skit? Like, for real, watch this again thinking it's an Adult Swim skit. You will completely believe that it is an Adult Swim skit. It's so weird. At the end, all the antagonists of the ad show up at Roller Kingdom saying that they're ruining their business, and they end up just deciding to roller skate as well. This is actually real. I can't get that through my head. MTV, Guillotine. Guillotine is a short 10 second bumper for the TV channel and TV. In the bumper, it shows a guillotine blade being raised up as someone pulls the lever to let the blade drop as the logo MTV drops out of the guillotine whilst looking like an M-shaped head. I don't know, is there much else to say about this one? Ad Cancel, Crying Indian. Crying Indian is an ad cancel PSA released in 1970 where a man's on a boat in a river sailing across the river. We then see as he's going through the river that more and more rubbish is showing up in the water. We see many different buildings in the background. The man arrives at shore with a bunch of rubbish on the sand as he's walking off the boat. Narrator comes in to say some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country and some people don't. When the narrator says that, the man sees someone lit out of their cars, the rubbish lands at the man's feet, we see him shed a tear. A booklet comes on the screen saying 71 things you can do to stop pollution and the campaign Keep America Beautiful comes up. Some people even say that this is one of the best ads of all time. I definitely don't agree with that. Brady Campaign, Alice. A PSA from the Brady Campaign in America released sometime in the 2000s follows Alice and the White Rabbit as they're walking down a hallway. The White Rabbit's trying to rush off as he's saying that they're late, but Alice wanders around and stops and walks into one of the rooms. She then wanders around that room until she sees a shelf. Alice goes over to the shelf and finds a cabinet. She's obviously curious about what's in the cabinet, so she grabs out what's in there and it's a gun. As Alice grabs the gun, narration starts by saying only one third of American households have a gun. When the narrator says that, Alice accidentally shoots herself in the head. The narrator asks the viewer to ask their neighbor if there's a gun where they play, as we see the white rabbit in shock. Why would you ask your neighbor? Why wouldn't you ask your parents? Daisy. This is a 1964 presidential campaign where a girl's holding a flower as she's pulling the petals off the flower and counting them. She keeps doing this until a person counting down from 10 comes in and she looks up and we realize that it's a countdown for a bomb. The narrator comes in to say that these are the stakes at the moment and then the text vote for President Johnson on November 3rd comes up. Well, that's just really strange. Like, did they really have to use fear tactics to try and make people vote for him? Skittles, Midas Touch. Midas Touch is a 2008 advertisement for the candy brand Skittles, where two people meet a man that can turn anything into Skittles by just touching it. At first, they think it's awesome how you can touch anything and make it into Skittles, but the other man comes in to question if it's awesome. He then goes on about how literally anything he touches turns into Skittles, such as him not being able to hold his own baby boy in his arms, and he even accidentally turned a man into Skittles after shaking his hand. The man goes on to answer the phone as it starts ringing, and of course, the phone turns into Skittles, and then in anger, he slams a desk, and that whole desk turns into Skittles as well. The company's slogan, Touch the Rainbow, Taste the Rainbow, comes up. I can see why people are unsettled by this ad, because people just think too much about it, but when you look at it how it is, like, it's pretty funny. I think it's a pretty good ad. Tier 4. Carb Solutions, Baby Shower. This commercial has a few ladies sitting around each other on couches at a baby shower as they're giving the woman gifts. One lady then asks Jenny if they've tried a certain snack that they're eating as Jenny says that she shouldn't because she's on a certain carb diet. 
After that, the lady asks him if she's tried it, turned into a demon lady trying to make her eat the food, as Jenny still says no and that she'll eat her carb solution snack instead. Narity comes in to talk about the carb solutions items that they're selling. Is aired during the day? Oh, look, I can see why people got scared of this. It's just really strange to have a demon lady in a commercial like this. Hirogata. I wasn't going to include this ad as it is a lost ad that no one's found even today, but because it's so popular and well known, I think I should at least talk about it a little bit. So this is apparently a Japanese PSA from Ad Cancel in Japan that aired sometime from the 90s to the 2000s. And the PSA itself is maybe about railroad safety, where two white figures fade in and out as we hear two bells ringing. And the PSA itself is meant to be about railroad safety, where two figures fade in and out as we hear bells ringing. After that, text in Japanese comes up saying someone dies every two seconds, and then the logo for Ad Cancel in Japan comes up. There are a lot of fan recreations of this supposed lost PSA, but it's interesting because there's so many fan recreations, but the original hasn't been found. Phones for you, Ghost Girl. Ghost Girl is a 2011 advertisement for the UK company Phones for You, where a woman's going to her car in a car park after shopping. As she's walking to the car, a ghost girl appears and disappears as the woman looks to where to see where there was nothing. She then gets to her car and after putting her seatbelt on, the girl's girl's outside the driver's side window with her hands on the window and the woman screams after seeing her. She talks to the woman telling her about Samsung's phone deal that they have that phones for you. The campaign text, Missing Our Deals Will Haunt You comes up and then you see the ghost girl making signs with one of her hands. Yeah, who thought this is a good idea to advertise phone plans? Like, seriously, someone needs to have a word with you. UNICEF Smurfs Smurfs is a 2005 UNICEF PSA from Belgium that was actually approved by the Smurfs creator's family. This PSA centers around Smurf Village getting bombed and the whole village turning into a war zone. This PSA didn't air until after 9pm to avoid children seeing this PSA, but it is quite disturbing because it's just really unexpected to see Smurf Village getting bombed and turning into a war zone. And look, if you enjoyed the Smurfs as a kid and you saw this, I think your childhood would just be ruined. Hyundai, Grim Reaper. This is a banned Hyundai advertisement released in 2012 for the Hyundai Veloster. In the ad, we see someone in a Ford Focus stop their car at the side of the road as the person in the back is going to get out by getting out on the side of the road. When that happens, we see the Grim Reaper open the door for her as she doesn't see the Grim Reaper there, and after that, the woman gets hit by the car. Then the same situation plays out, but in the new Hyundai Veloster, because the car only has three doors, she gets out in the third door that's on the other side as the Grim Reaper gets hit by the car instead. Text comes up saying Hyundai Veloster, one door on the left and two doors on the safe side. This ad's honestly hilarious and well done, but obviously a lot of people are scared because, ooh, the Grim Reaper's in there and someone gets hit by a car, but... If you ask me, I think it's an awesome ad. It does what it needs to do really well. But this ad was banned in Holland because it was controversial. Gif Gaff, Halloween. An advertisement from the UK company Gif Gaff released sometime in the 2010s where a woman's being chased by a man with a chainsaw. Then the woman trips over as the man runs past her and we see that something else is chasing him. We see that it's a clown chasing him and that the zombie's chasing the clown and it keeps going on until we see people chasing each other set up a choir for their screaming voices. Am I missing something here or is this really confusing? But the text, when you're scared, you're not the boss, at GifGaff where all the boss comes up. Yeah, I still don't understand this ad and how does it have anything to do with a phone network? Beware of Thin Ice Beware of Thin Ice is a public information film from 1986 released in Finland where we see some animated characters that are a bear and a child as they're playing out in the snow. They end up sliding down a snow hill and they see a bird on a chimney making a noise. The child walks around the frozen lake to go to the bird as the bear walks across the lake and the bear falls through the ice and into the lake. The bear is struggling to get out of the water as the boy comes and crawls his way over to get the bear out of the water. They then walk around the lake to get to the bird where we see a few figures on the building and the kid and the bear walk in. The bear when inside has a blanket wrapped around him and hot water on his feet and then after that all the characters form the shape of a number two. The bear then says, beware of thin ice. This is honestly a bit uncanny in my opinion, but this is just another situation where old TV programs are scaring people because they're old. Crinkles the Clown. Crinkles the Clown is a 1956 advertisement for sugar rice crinkles, where a man's dressed up as a clown, pops his head through a kennel of some kind and says, Breakfast. but then he stands up to say he's hungry and goes over to a bowl of sugar rice crinkles and has a spoonful as he's saying the best cereal is post sugar rice crinkles. 
Throughout the whole ad, Crinkles is just talking about the product and why it's such a good cereal and that you'll love the cereal more than every other cereal. The ad ends with the text, greatest cereal treat on earth. Huh, another case of old TV programming scaring people. How many of these are we gonna get? But with this one too, I do understand that people are scared of clowns, so yeah, I guess it passes, but hey, Crinkles is a homie. Ego, Monster Girl. In 2001 advertisement for Ego Waffles follows two kids as they're sitting down eating breakfast and the girl's talking to her toy doll. The other kid tries to steal the girl's Ego because she seems to be distracted with her doll and as he's trying to do that, the girl turns into a monster telling the boy to not steal her Ego. Obviously the boy basically shed his pants and then a narrator comes in to talk about Ego Waffles. Virgin Mobile, Stalker. This is a series of two ads where a woman's stalking someone named Brad. In the first ad, she's in a tree talking to the viewer about things she's doing to stalk Brad. She goes on to say the many things that she can do to stalk Brad with a new phone that she has for $25 a month deal through Virgin Mobile. In the second ad, she's in Brad's closet, basically doing the same thing as the first ad, but she can see Brad through the closet. The whole point of these ads is that the phone deal Virgin Mobile is offering is crazy, and they show that by showing someone stalking another person because that's crazy as well. Happy's Pizza, Friday. Happy's Pizza Friday is an advertisement showing off a new deal that Happy's Pizza has on Fridays where you can get two rib tips dinners or one pound jumbo shrimp for $9.99. The ad has this weird Pac-Man lookalike spinning of pizza and then a narrator comes in to talk more about the deal. Also, I just found out that this company has over 65 locations in the US, but that makes me beg the question, why is this company spending so little on their ads if they have that many locations where they have a decent budget to make half decent ads? Jolly Green Giant this classic 1960s ad has a person in a field that's meant to be the Jolly Green Giant. There's a jingle about the Jolly Green Giant playing throughout the ad, and the giant gives some animated people things like beans that they're sorting out and cutting up. Then we see footage of beans coming out of the tin when someone's using a fork to scoop them out of the tin. The narrator's talking about how the beans are fresh, where they're literally putting shit like this in tins. But at the end of the ad, we see the animated characters riding a train with a few tins on the train as well, as the Jolly Green Giant grabs one of the tins. Mr. Yuck I love this classic PSA, but this one was released in 1975 where we hear some weird music playing in the background at the start of the PSA as we hear laughing. Then we see Mr. Yuck as someone's talking about Mr. Yuck and how he's mean and green. The PSA breaks into a song talking about the dangers in the house as they show off the Mr. Yuck sticker where it's a sticker to show kids that something is poisonous. The ad ends with pretty much what happens at the start of the ad as well. I don't know what to tell you, Mr. Yuck's a banger. Like it is a little bit disturbing seeing the sick kids and stuff like that as the narrator is saying sick. Sick, sick, but I love this shit. It's so good. Barambo 2. Barambo 2 is an advertisement from Iraq for different types of lollies. In this ad, we see cursed CGI abomination singing a song in Georgian, and I have no idea what they're singing about. Maybe they're singing about the product, but they go around a carnival doing different things, such as being on a carousel, going on the dodgem cars. And at the end of the ad, the text comes up, which roughly translates to thank you, delicious caramel. Yeah, sorry, I don't understand this ad at all. Freddy Freaker. A 1988 commercial for the party freak himself known as Freddy Freaker. Freddy Freaker! We see that he's a yellow goblin thing that constantly t poses and just moves side to side as we hear the song that they made up for Freddy Freaker. The ad is advertising their phone line where you can ring Freddy Freaker to hear what? I don't know. He could just be trying to seduce you on the calls, and all I know is that it's $2 a call, and that was $2 back in 1988. Fuck that. But I know this little character became a meme a few years back as the channel Oni plays talked about the party freak and even sold merch of the character on a shirt. Speaking about merch, over this holiday season, you can get 10% off your orders with the code HOLIDAY10 on my merch store, zackr.store. I have three exclusive designs as well as stuff with my logo on it. I have stickers, sweatshirts, shirts, and even hoodies. So remember, if you want to get 10% off your order, make sure to go check out zackr.store. Anyways, let's continue. RSPCA, how much is that dog in the window? A PSA from 1987 made by RSPCA in the UK shows a dog looking at the camera whilst instrumentals of how much is that dog in the window plays in the background. The camera slowly zooms up to the dog until a gun's pulled up the side of the dog's head and a voice says please give us a pound or we'll have to pull the trigger. This is a very controversial PSA for good reason and later had a censored version that replaces PSA on TV just talking about how much it costs to take care of a dog. Which, why didn't they do that in the first place? Nasonex B Bees are commercial for Nasonex in the 2000s for a nasal spray where a bee that's voiced by Antonio Banderas is giving flowers to another bee. 
the other bee sneezes because it gets hay fever, and that the bee that was giving the other bee flowers talks about how it could be congestion from seasonal allergies, as a different voice comes in to talk about the product. The CGI animation is so bad, so I can see why people were scared by this ad, because with this, it's just those bees. Like, they look terrible. All I will say though is Antonio Banderas' voice could seduce anyone, so that overshadows the ad. Eagle Man Eagle Man is a 90s ad for car insurance where the ad has two girls in a car as they stop because someone or something jumped on the roof of their car. They get out to see a man in an eagle suit that's meant to be Eagle Man saying that he has something for them. And then the something that he had for them was laying an egg on their roof. But the egg hatches as we see a little chick as it's holding a piece of paper with low insurance rates as well as a phone number in its beak. IHOP commercial a 1969 commercial for the American restaurant chain IHOP follows a few kids as they're running through a field whilst holding a bunch of balloons. Some weird music's playing in the background, it literally sounds like if Elvin and the Chipmunks were possessed in the background. Then they arrive at IHOP and eat some pancakes. When they're eating pancakes, the narrator talks about how their pancakes are priced to be affordable. A photo of one of the restaurants pops up at the end of the ad, and this ad's just wild. Tier 5 Skittles Share the Rainbow Share the Rainbow is a parody of the Skittles ad of the Share the Rainbow Taste the Rainbow ads. And this particular fake ad was released in 2011 where a couple are doing it on their wedding night. They're going at it and then the man finishes and Skittles goes all over the woman and then the Share the Rainbow Taste the Rainbow slogan comes up. People believe that this is an actual ad for Skittles, but no, it is a fake ad and it does have a warning at the start that it isn't an ad for Skittles or has nothing to do with the company at all, besides their product. Mattel, Baby Secret Doll. A 1966 advertisement for a Mattel baby doll that whispers into your ear secrets. In the ad, the girl's playing with the doll and pulls the string on the baby doll to hear it whisper in her ear in a very weird way where the doll's mouth is actually moving as it talks. Did they really have to make the doll's mouth move while it's talking? It just looks so uncanny. It's strange. Greenpeace, have a break. This 2011 PSA from Greenpeace in the UK follows an office worker needing a break. The PSA imitates a Kit Kat commercial where their slogan is have a break, have a Kit Kat because the company is targeting partner companies of Nestle. But the man goes to pull out his Kit Kat and as he opens it we see a orangutan finger. Everyone else sees this except for him as the co-worker is in shock as he's about to take a bite out of the finger. The PSA then shows the text, give the orangutan a break, as their rainforests are being cut down by companies that Nestle partners with to get palm oil for their chocolate. Family Violence Prevention Fund Stairs Stairs is a 1990s PSA from the company Family Violence Prevention Fund. In the PSA, it follows a kid sitting at the top of the stairs as they're listening to their parents argue. We then hear that the father starts to their mother because the father didn't get any pizza. In this PSA, when they see the kid's faces, he's in shock of watching the whole situation. The PSA ends with the text, children have to sit by and watch, what's your excuse? Also, some cheeky bastard on YouTube decided to edit like the Pizza Hut promotion in the Ninja Turtles VHS with this PSA and acts like it was on this VHS when, no, it's not. Like a lot of people believe that this PSA was sponsored by Pizza Hut, but no, it's not. It's, it's not. Like if you go and watch their upload, you can tell it's edited, the edited text in between to make it look like it was a part of it. And by the way, I found out that it isn't a part of it because I was watching intros and outros of the VHS tapes on YouTube. Thanks to those people that archive that stuff. Legends. Pepperami, it's a bit of an animal. So this is an advertising campaign for the pepperami, which is basically a salami stick. And in the most well-known ad, we see a talking pepperami. The pepperami seems to be going insane as it can't resist eating itself and then eats its own arms off and says that it can't resist the spicy taste. I guess the image of the pepperami eating itself is disturbing? Star Chick Cockroach follows a man and two kids as a bunch of animated characters are on the side of the road as a cockroach is dancing in the middle of all of them. Then a narrator comes in some of the language and talks about the shoes that Star Chick sells at their stores. But after that we see the characters again, but a weird looking Woody Woodpecker comes in and stomps the cockroach on the side of the road as the man gets upset about it. I talked about this one in my last iceberg, but what the fuck? Kelby, Return of the Kelby Dog. Return of the Kelby Dog is an advertisement for potato chips where an anthropomorphic dog is watching kids play baseball. Dog then sees one kid sitting on his own and taps the boy on his shoulder. The dog then tries to encourage the kid to play baseball as the kid throws the ball in the other direction. Another dog grabs the ball and gives it to the boy, and the anthropomorphic dog grabs it out of his mouth and gives it to the boy to throw him as he throws it in a different direction. Then both dogs go and chase after the ball and they get into a fight. 
After that, the anthropomorphic dog with bandages on gives a kid a pack of Calbee chips, and they both jump up in the air like it's a bloody Toyota commercial. Also, yeah, you might be confused if you live in America because the whole campaign in Australia is Toyota O water feeling. Remco, Baby Laugh A Lot. A commercial for a toy Baby Laugh A Lot follows a girl as she sits the toy under a table and shows off the doll. The doll's in a rocky chair as it keeps laughing and laughing, and a few girls turn their heads around to stare at the doll, and they all start to laugh as the doll's laughing. Everyone's laughing whilst we get a final shot of the Baby Laugh A Lot rocking back and forth. Orkin. Pest Control. A commercial for Orkin Pest Control follows a man where he hears the doorbell ringing and as he answers it, a giant six foot tall termite's asking him if he can use his phone. Obviously the man's really confused about this and the termite keeps asking and as he's doing that, a pest control ute comes up and arrives and then we see the man go around the house to inspect for termites. Then at the end of the ad, a man from Orkin is standing at the front of the house, death staring a termite in their car as the termite zooms off. What the fuck? Animast. Bunny. Funny is a commercial advertising a TV channel's creepy animation night, and they do that by having a man walk up to a stall to see a man in a bunny suit sitting in a toilet. The bunny just stares at him as he's wondering what the fuck is going on, until the bunny slides over and pats the toilet seat to let the man sit next to him. I guess it gets the message across well, but it's just confusing. Above the influence, stop looking at me. Above the influence, oh boy they're bad. But they're a PSA company that makes anti-smoking and anti-drug PSAs, and in this one we follow an animated man smoking weed on the couch. The man says to stop looking at me at his dog, and then he goes on to say I can stop at any time I want. The dog then responds to say okay, how about right now, and the man says next week is better. The PSA ends with the dog saying you disappoint me, and walks away to put a flag up with the dog's face on it. What? Just watch this one for yourself and see how weird and confusing it is. Pop-Tarts, Yeti. A 2003 commercial for Pop-Tarts follows a Yeti talking to someone about the new chocolate fudge Pop-Tarts and how they're good. There are subtitles in the ad so we know what the Yeti's saying, but the Yeti questions them about why they're looking at him like he's crazy, but we see it's two random kids that are looking at the Yeti as they're in shock. The kids then scream and run away as the narrator comes in to tell us to listen to the Yeti and talks about the new Pop-Tarts that they're promoting in this ad. Why does this narrator sound like Dr. Nick from The Simpsons? Dirt Devil, The Exorcist. Dirt Devil is an advertisement that parodies the well-known horror film released in 1973, The Exorcist. In the ad, we see an old woman walk into the house as a priest is there with her. An old woman walks around the house and hears someone yelling in a room after going upstairs, and the priest walks into the room to see a girl possessed on the roof as lights flash on and off. The priest is in shock, but then we get to see that the girl stuck to the roof because her grandma's using a Dirt Devil vacuum upstairs that's making her get stuck to the roof. This shit is hilarious, but I get why people are scared of it, I guess. It's just really well done. It's pretty funny. Reclamas plus is like I fucked that up so hard, but God, I don't know what it means. This is a PSA from the company's social advertising in Poland, and the PSA is called Bad Touch. In the PSA, we see a girl playing with a toy doll, and then we hear heavy footsteps as she's brushing the doll's hair. The toy doll's eyes then open as a girl's looking around to see if a person is coming in as they're dressing the doll up and completely covering it up. Then the camera pans out to see how many dolls are on the floor as the girl's holding a doll in her arms as a text in Polish comes up saying which roughly translates to each year a few thousand children are harassed. Tier 6 Mets Judderman Judderman is an advertisement from the year 2000 for an alcoholic beverage called Mets and in the ad, we see a puppet walk on stage as the camera focuses on the moon. Then we see the same puppet as a real person walking around a snowy forest as we hear some music and a little rhyme about the gentleman in the background. The gentleman's trying to sneak up on some traveler that is walking around through the forest and eventually gets right in his face as he holds a small bottle of Mets. After that, the traveler follows the gentleman because the traveler wants a Mets bottle. They go all the way through the forest until they arrive at a place where lots of people are drinking Mets bottles. The traveler drinks one then turns into a puppet being controlled by a puppet gentleman. Weird, but also pretty damn cool with some really nice set design. Turok, Evolution. 
This is an advertisement for a game called Turok Evolution, where a man's walking out of his house and as he talks to his neighbor. The man's walking out of his house to pick up a newspaper outside his house, and as he's walking back, he hits his foot on a sprinkler as a bit of blood is coming out of his toe. Then random footage of the game comes up as the man starts to freak out because he sees the game. But because apparently the creatures smell blood, and at the end of the ad, we actually see blood splatter on the neighbor's car as the game's logo comes up. Hanna-Barbera, anti-drug PSA. I love this 70s anti-drug PSA. But for a bit of context, this PSA was made by the animation company Hanna-Barbera, which are responsible for animated shows like Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, as well as many other shows. In the PSA, we see a man light up a nice doobie as he starts spinning around with a rainbow trail. But then we see a joint with arms and legs, as well as a pill with arms and legs walk him to a cupboard. The cupboard then opens up to see a few dead people inside as one of them is waving a finger, telling the person to come in. The man tries to run away as he goes nowhere, and the dead man's hand touches his shoulder as his face changes and his hair goes green as he gets pulled back into the cupboard. Partnership for a Drug-Free America, Cleaning Girl. A PSA released from Partnership for a Drug-Free America in 1997 shows a girl on meth scrubbing her house clean with a toothbrush, whilst a jingle about meth is playing in the background. We then see images of her in a corner as she's looking at her skin and eventually trying to itch imaginary bugs out of her skin. There's an alternate version of this PSA with a different sounding jingle that still has the same lyrics as well. American Cancer Society, Smoking Fetus. Smoking Fetus is a 1984 PSA released from the American Cancer Society to make people aware of the dangers of smoking whilst pregnant. They do this by showing a fetus smoking in the womb as a narrator comes in to ask if you would give a cigarette to your unborn child. They go on to say every time you smoke you do exactly that, American Cancer Society's phone number comes up at the end of the PSA. Crusher. Kittens. How did this ad scare anyone? It's just photos of cats playing instruments as one of the images of a cat sings a song in the ad. It's honestly just a cursed ad for a drink called a crusher, where it makes it easier to make milkshakes in four different flavors, and those are chocolate, banana, strawberry, and raspberry. There isn't really much to say about this one besides from the ad just speaks for itself. Cat's Eye, Pest Control Jingle. 2012 commercial for Cat's Eye Pest Control, where a cat is looking through a fridge. We then see a few different animals preparing for something, and we even see an ant army. And don't worry, all the CGI animated animals are absolute monstrosities. But there is a pest alert for these horrible looking things, and they go to get rid of all the pests in a house as a jingle for cat's eye pest controls playing as they're getting rid of the pests. Monkey on their back. Ooh, one of the first examples of a jump scare being used at all, or even the first example ever. But in this PSA from the 70s, we see a symbol monkey clapping its hands together as a girl talks about how people that do heroin have a monkey on their back. Isn't it cute? Right after that, the girl says, isn't it cute? The monkey jump scares a viewer with the funniest jump scare I've ever seen. It's interesting because this is apparently one of the first examples of the jump scare being used in media. Capital One, Troll. A 2002 advertisement for Capital One where a man's fighting a troll in a house as their partner's asking if they're still doing the bills. The man and the troll wrestle as the man says he's wrestling with the credit card balance, obviously trying to show how struggling or dealing with the credit card rates. Then the woman comes down the stairs to dropkick the troll, and then tells the partner that they switch to a Capital One credit card and the troll then shrinks down as the woman flicks it away. Narrator comes in to talk about the Capital One credit cards, and at the end of the ad, we see a hand put a pencil up the troll's back end. No joke, this is how the ad ends. Like, what? Prevent gun violence. The monster is real. The Monster is Real is a 2014 PSA released from the company Prevent Gun Violence in the United States. In this PSA, we see a kid is there snooping in a closet and he sees something and runs away and hides under his bed. The mother tells him to get out as the boy doesn't want to as they saw a monster in the closet. We then see that the boys stay up late at night because they're scared of the supposed monster in the closet, but the parents come in and tell him there's no such thing as monsters and for him to go to bed. The next day after walking past the closet, the boy snoops into the closet to find a gun sitting on top of the set of drawers. The boy grabs the gun and inspects it and then accidentally shoots himself in the head with the gun. The text, the monster is real, 1.5 million US children are living with unlocked loaded guns comes up on screen. Well, talk about a twist ending, holy shit. Lopak Ardman ads. This is an interesting set of ads for the butter brand Lopak, where the animation studio responsible for Wallace and Gromit, Ardman Animation, animated these ads. The full ads themselves are still lost, but there are segments of the ads up on YouTube with people that worked on the ads narrating them. In the ads, a block of butter turns into a person and does some kind of activity, which usually ends in the butter person talking about the butter. NSPCC, 
cartoon. This 2002 PSA from NSPCC in the UK follows a cartoon boy being by his father at home. It's played off like a cartoon because the cartoon boy gives very exaggerated reactions to the that is endured on him, such as getting a massive cartoony style bruise on his head and at one point his whole head's on fire. The whole PSA builds up until the boy is in his room and his father approaches. The boy is scared and backs himself into a corner until he soils himself when his father picks him up. The boy runs away until the father catches up to him and throws him down the stairs. Then it's revealed that it was a real boy thrown down the stairs as the text real kids don't bounce back comes up. It then ends with the text, if you think a child's being a... do something. Also, it's apparently supported by Microsoft. Stay out and stay alive. Stay Out and Stay Alive is a public information film about staying out of old mines and staying alive. The whole thing is actually 24 minutes long, and it's basically the whole piff is talking about how mines are very old and very dangerous, and you shouldn't go wandering through them, you should just stay out. They talk about many different abandoned things to do with mines, such as the mines themselves, sticks of dynamite, and even old abandoned buildings, and how you should definitely stay out of them. The piff doesn't show any deaths, but there are people talking about those events where people do die from exploring these type of places. Tier 7 TV3 Horror A 2008 Irish advertisement for the TV channel called TV3. In this ad we see a band playing a song as they're cut off and the woman gets hit by one of the guitarists and is bleeding to death. And then after that everyone attacks everyone and even the drummer slices a person's head and half of the cymbal. But it's funny because after all that the drummer just casually goes back to playing the drums. Was this actually an ad for a horror channel? I really don't know. Teletoon Baby Teletoon is a TV channel, and in this ad called Baby, it's a bumper for the night station where we see a stroller sitting outside at night. We then see like a big rock thing with a fake face on it, as it starts to move and then eventually a mouth opens it and rips and then covers the camera. The text Teletoon then comes up on the screen. This is like if Pee Wee Herman had a bad acid trip. Montana Meth Project, ER. ER is a Montana Meth Project PSA released in 2011, where we see a girl staring at the camera as she's being moved on a stretcher in the hospital. Obviously, ER stands for emergency room, so the girl's being taken to the emergency room as we hear her narrate the ad. She says, if I had asked, would meth make me become an addict, or can you really lose it on meth? We then see her freaking out in the stretcher as she keeps on narrating. She goes on to say, or if I had asked, would meth become the only thing I care about, I wouldn't be asking. Ad cancel. Crashing glasses. So this PSA is a part of the Driving Can Kill a Friendship PSA campaign that aired throughout the 80s. In this PSA, we see two glasses of wine as they're approaching each other. The narrator talks about how when friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving, friends die from drinking and driving, as the two wine glasses smash together. We then see another set of glasses do the same thing with the car crash sound effect over it again. As it's about to happen for a third time, a third hand comes in to stop one of the glasses from crashing into the other. And then we see the text, Drinking and Driving Can Kill a Friendship. Montana Meth Project, Kevin. Another Montana Meth Project PSA, but this one was released in 2010, and it follows a kid named Kevin narrating the PSA, talking about a person that got addicted to meth. The first mention where they went to school, where they beat up their best friend. The PSA then goes on like this, talking about how he used to dig at imaginary insects under his skin, and then finally shows where he spends 23 hours every day at, as he's being strapped to a bed at a mental institution. Finally, at the end of the PSA, we see Kevin is narrating the PSA, and he says, this is what I said when he told me I was going to try meth. And all that follows is silence. This is one PSA in a running campaign where they had the same kind of scenarios play out, such as PSAs called Ben and another one called Jessica. Partnership for a Drug-Free America, Rodney. This is a Partnership for a Drug-Free America PSA where we hear a narrator talk about a man named Rodney as we see a photo of him. Then we see a photo of Rodney on heroin as the narrator says it's a photo of Rodney on heroin. PSA keeps going back and forth between the photos of him on and not on heroin. The PSA ends with a photo of Rodney on heroin as the narrator says that was my friend Rodney and then the text Rodney Harvey with a birth and death date comes up. It's actually one of the good partnership for a drug free America PSAs which is a rare sight to see. Dal Fruit Face Morph Face Morph is a 1991 French commercial for a product called Dal Fruit and in the ad we see a man grab a product from the tree and take a bite of it. After he takes a bite of it, he whacks himself with a cartoon hammer as his face morphs and the product comes up at the end of the ad. I am very confused about what the hell is going on in this ad, but alright. Amazon. Human face dog. A Japanese Amazon commercial for Amazon Prime where a dog has a man's face is talking about Amazon Prime video as the dog's doing normal activities. There isn't much else to say about this ad besides from saying it looks cursed and it reminds me of Korn's music video for the cover of the song Word Up. 
Which, let me say, the music video is so fucking weird, but the song's a banger. Mr. Soapy. Mr. Soapy is meant to be a Japanese commercial for a company named Misawa, which I assume they're meant to make a soap product. But in the ad, we see a mouth over a bar of soap as they're talking to us saying that they're Mr. Soapy, and that the most important thing to do to not get sick is to wash your hands. Then a man in an army outfit finished up in the toilet as Mr. Soapy says, remember to wash your hands, but the man just brushes it off and starts to walk away. As that happens, the bar of soap hits him in the face and knocks him out, and then we see him knocked out as Mr. Soapy reminds us to wash our hands. At the end of the ad, we see the same man that got knocked out using Mr. Soapy to wash his hands. Lucasaid NRG, Desmond the Dog. This is an advertisement for Lucasaid Energy Drink, where a woman's singing about Desmond the Dog, which is a puppet dog, and walks up to the lady. The lady then talks about the Lucasaid NRG drink to Desmond and lets the dog try some. After the dog tries some, he turns into a CGI dog that starts to dance and move on his own. As the woman's scared of it, she tries to jump out of the fake window. As she's trying to do that, the dog sees her backhand as two bits of ham and probably does something to her backhand. But the company's logo comes up as Desmond breaks through it at the end. This is just <laughs> fucking strange. Nickelodeon. Blood and Guts. Okay, so this is apparently a lost Nickelodeon bumper where a thing that's meant to be blood is singing as the guts are farting. This is just extremely cursed. I can barely understand what blood's saying half the time. Who thought that this was a good idea? Like, just watch it and you'll see what I mean. I ain't no scab, so don't call me that. I live in this basement where the guts are that rat. Tax Doctor. Tax Doctor is an ad from the 2000s that advertises that you can get a tax doctor to help you with your taxes. It's literally that simple. It's just a tax doctor basically saying if you have over 10,000 in taxes, you can ring them and they'll help you with their taxes. But are people really that scared about this? Like, hey, I know the tax doctor that's in this ad looks cursed, but it's not that scary. SWR Day Trip. Oh boy, a German PSA from the very controversial PSA company, SWR, released in 1999, shows a man and his son walking around the streets to see different horrific things, from a dead man on the road to a woman possibly being under a store. The PSA then ends with the text, what you would never show your children in real life, they shouldn't see on TV. T8. Ad Cancel. Lauren Cox. Lauren Cox is a 1997 PSA from Ad Cancel in partnership with the US Department of Transportation. And in this PSA, we see footage of a baby meant to be Lauren Cox that was recorded in 1992. As the home video is playing, the text Lauren Cox, killed by a drunk driver on April 1st, 1993 in Louisville, Texas, so were her parents, comes up. This PSA is a part of a campaign and Ad Cancel was running through the late 90s, showing how sad it is that young kids were dying as a result of drunk driving. Ad Cancel, Jessalyn Rose. This is another PSA that's a part of that same campaign that I literally just talked about in the last entry. In this PSA, we see some footage of Jessalyn Rose waving the American flag for a marching band at some game, and after that we see a bit of text that comes up on the screen. The text reads, Jessalyn Rose was hit by a drunk driver and died. But then we see footage of her in the hospital suffering from that accident. Then more text comes up to say 11 years later, as the campaign Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk comes up. These are disturbing, but really well done in my opinion. They don't show you anything gory, but your mind just fills in the blanks as you like read what's going on. Partnership for a Drug-Free America, Crackhead Bob. Crackhead Bob is a Partnership for a Drug-Free America PSA where a man named Crackhead Bob is in a classroom on his own talking to the camera. Crackhead Bob is trying to say the alphabet, but can't say it properly as text comes up on the screen talking about how he's Crackhead Bob and that he has permanent brain damage from crack. The PSA ends as he's struggling to sing the alphabet. Texas Department for Transportation, Jacqueline. Jacqueline is a PSA release from the Texas Department of Transportation in 2004. The PSA shows a woman holding up an old picture of herself before she got into a car accident caused by a drunk driver. She explains how she ended up in the situation and what happened to her until near the end of the PSA she pulls down the photo to show how she looks now after the accident. This is more of a depressing PSA than it actually being scary as it's sad to see someone had to go through so much from this accident. I've talked about this PSA quite a lot, but basically the accident happened in 1999 and she eventually went on Oprah to talk about this whole situation as well. Unfortunately, Jacqueline did die of cancer on the 20th of April in 2019. Ad cancel. I didn't mean to shoot daddy's gun. This PSA was released around the year 2000 from ad cancel and the PSA shows us a drawing from a kid where they're narrating the PSA. They're talking about how their brother had a hole in their stomach because a bullet hit him. But then it's revealed that the boy narrating the PSA accidentally shot his brother in the stomach 
as it was just sitting there in the garage and the text, an unlocked gun can be the death of your family comes up. Like, holy shit, all right. Ad cancel, tick. This person that made the iceberg really loves ad cancel, don't they? But yeah, another ad cancel PSA. And then this one, it has kids saying tick, as some of them are saying about heat waves and global warming between the kids saying tick. The whole PSA is meant to tell people that something needs to be done about global warming or their futures at risk. Partnership for a Drug-Free America, Snake. Snake is a PSA from Partnership for a Drug-Free America released in 1986, where we see a drug dealer talk to the viewer about how they're a snake dealing in weed, coke, and crack. They go on to talk about how if you do it, you'll do anything to get more, such as steal from your mum and cheat on your homeboys. The drug dealer is slowly forming into an anthropomorphic snake as he's talking to the viewer, until at the end of the PSA, he is a snake man saying, Do I look like the kind of guy that do that to a kid like you? Yes. But hey, all I can say is that I have an exclusive design of this snake man on my merch store at zakar.store. And over the holiday season, you can get 10% off your order with the code HOLIDAY10 at checkout. But hey, I do have a Snake Man sticker, shirt, sweatshirt, and even hoodies. So go check it out. Links in the description. But as this PSA goes, it's so funny with the YES at the end. Like, I love it. Also, you should check out my snake design on my merch store. Luke Starler. This PSA is about a man that's suffering with AIDS as we see him trying to get out of bed as he's struggling. We see that he has stage 9 AIDS and it takes him a whole PSA just to get out of bed as we see and hear him how much pain he's in and how much he's struggling just to get up out of bed. The PSA ends with the text and you think it's hard to get out of bed to get a condom. Afrocare. Shoeboxes. This PSA from the company Afrocare Rwanda Relief appeal in 1995. In the PSA we see footage of African children walking around upset as the PSA tells us that we know that you hate giving money so please send your old shoeboxes. After that, we see dead people all over the ground with more text fading and saying we're running out of coffins. I don't find this one as disturbing as other people do. It's disturbing, but it's not this disturbing in my opinion. Go Gentle. Stop the Horror. Stop the Horror is a 2017 short film from Australia in the state of Victoria where we get to see a man suffering in his last few days alive in a hospital. It's about six minutes long and throughout the whole thing, there's a button on screen saying Stop the Horror, which ties into the message that no one should have to suffer like this man has. If you did click the stop the horror button, you'd be taken to a page where you can support the cause by signing up to the cause for support voluntary assisted dying instead of making people suffer. The whole short's based on a real story where a man named Greg Sims, who suffered through his battle with brain cancer, especially in his last few days alive, was in constant pain. What makes this so disturbing for me is that it isn't bullshit. This actually happens to many people in hospitals that are suffering. Dunkle Ziffer, Tentacle. Tentacle is a German PSA released in 2008 by the company Dunkel Ziffer. This PSA tackles the long-term effects of child by using a tentacle as a metaphor for those events as the main character remembers. We follow a young girl with a tentacle staying with her as she grows up. She keeps getting older and older as the tentacle stays with her until she's an old woman that eventually passes away. When she finally passes away, the tentacle leaves her as the text fades in saying if children never get help, they never outgrow their trauma. PSAs like this just disturbing. They just get to me and disturb me. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video where I dive into the creepy ads iceberg. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and make sure to comment your thoughts down below about the video. And if you enjoy my content, make sure to click that subscribe button as it does help me out a lot. Anyways, let's get straight into the shout outs. Massive thanks to Diamond Pony, Madeline Stringer, Miranda S and Ash Crimson for signing up to my $2 pirate tea. Massive thanks to Elliot, Angie Patterson, and Julia Wakefield for signing up to my $5 pusher tea. Massive thanks to Sam M 1994 for signing up to my $10 Pee Wee Herman tea. And lastly, massive thanks to Fatima for signing up to my $25 Top Chef tea. If you want to find out how you can get your name at the end of my videos, make sure to click the link in the description to my Patreon to sign up to those tiers to get your name at the end of the videos. Or you can join my YouTube memberships to get the same thing. Anyways, make sure to check out my merch because 10% off until the end of the year. Anyways, I'll see you on the next video.